The name Lobo is synonymous with the University of New Mexico, but Lobo is also known as the wolf that changed America. Learn more about Lobo, Ernest Thompson Seton, and how they changed America on this edition of Artifact of the Week. By 1890, Ernest Thompson Seton was a well-known naturalist and artist. Seton believed that predators and wolves in particular were dangerous and needed to be controlled or killed. His painting Triumph of the Wolves and the Pursuit illustrated his beliefs, yet failed to bring him the greater recognition as an artist he likely desired. Then an advertisement to hunt and kill a wolf pack in the Currumpaw Creek area of northeastern New Mexico brought him face to face with a particular wolf that would challenge his beliefs about animals and their place in the natural world. Local ranchers in the area west of Des Moines, New Mexico, were frustrated and angered by a wolf pack that was preying on their livestock. Wolves, which were being pressured by the influx of settlers to their normal habitat, and the loss of bison, elk, and pronghorn antelope as a natural food source, were now killing cattle and other livestock for survival. Efforts by the locals to poison the wolf pack failed as the wolves would simply eat around the poisoned meat. They also attempted but failed at trapping and hunting the wolf pack. In this case, the alpha male, which the locals called Lobo, was reportedly able to detect efforts to trap or poison members of the pack and managed to evade any attempts to kill or capture them. Out of desperation, the ranchers offered up a $1,000 bounty on Lobo's head. The bounty, along with the challenge of the hunt, brought Seton and others to New Mexico to capture or kill the wolf and his pack. Now upon Seton's arrival, he studied the pack before making his first attempts to kill or capture the wolves. His first attempt involved five poison baits spread across Lobo's territory. The following day, all the baits were gone and Seton assumed that Lobo was dead. Later, however, he found the five baits all in a pile covered with wolf feces to show Lobo's contempt and mockery of Seton's attempt to kill him and the other wolves. Seton tried traps, but no luck. The wolves would find the traps, mark their location so others would avoid them, or they'd set off the traps as an obvious sign they knew what was going on. Seton even redesigned and modified traps, so even attempts by the wolves to prematurely set them off would result in success and their capture. Reportedly, Lobo would walk up the traps, brush his tail over the debris, camouflaging them, and expose the trap and then walk away. Two weeks stretched into four months. Seton tracked and studied the pack of wolves. As the months passed, Seton noticed the presence of a smaller white wolf he called Blanca. She often ran ahead of the pack and would identify and mark suspect areas. Seton theorized this was likely the alpha female and Lobo's primary mate. Working off of this theory, Seton set a special baited trap for Blanca. Blanca fell for it and was captured. It's said that when Seton found her, she was whining with Lobo by her side. Lobo ran a safe distance away and watched as Seton and his partner killed Blanca and tied her to their horses. Seton said he heard the howls of Lobo for two days afterwards. The calls were described by Seton as having an unmistakable note of sorrow. It was no longer the loud defiant howl, but a long plaintive wail. Although Seton felt some remorse for the grieving wolf, he decided to continue with his plan to capture Lobo. Seton used Blanca's fur and blood to create a scent trail and bait the traps that would catch this wily wolf. Lobo lost his sense of caution and would now routinely reveal his presence to Seton, something he had never done in the past. So Seton set his traps, four of them, and prepared the area with Blanca's blood, scent, and fur. Lobo picked up the scent of Blanca and went to investigate, and on January 31st, 1894, Lobo was caught with each of his four legs clutched in a trap. On Seton's approach, Lobo stood despite his injuries and howled. Despite their long and frustrating hunt, he was touched by Lobo's bravery and loyalty to his mate and decided not to kill him. Watching this wolf over a period of time, he came to realize he wasn't a vicious predator that deserved to die. Seton made the decision to keep him alive and transport him to a zoo instead. Lobo's mouth was secured with a rope muzzle and he was moved to a barn on a nearby ranch where Seton would feed him and tend to his wounds from the traps. Once at the barn, Lobo's wounds were treated and he was secured by a chain and left with food and water for the night. Over the next few hours, Lobo moaned and howled. Seton says the wolf stared off into the distance as if he was mourning the loss of Blanca and the freedom he had enjoyed roaming his territory. The next morning, Lobo was found dead with the food and water untouched. According to popular belief, Lobo died of a broken heart from the loss of Blanca, 
and his freedom. Although Ernest Thompson's seat in Hunt for Lobo was not unique for the time period, the result of his experience was extraordinary. Like many of his contemporaries, Seton viewed wolves largely as an intrusive force of nature that needed to be tamed or removed. This drastic shift in Seton's attitude towards wolves after his successful hunt transformed him from hunter to conservationist, convincing him that we as humans could and should live more connected to the natural world. Seton began pushing for the protection and conservation of wildlife and particularly wolves. Now the story of Seton and Lobo is the first story in his well-known book, Wild Animals I Have Known, which elevated him to the status of world-class author and speaker. The Lobo story is routinely retold through articles, books, and films, and a PBS documentary called King of the Kirimpah, The Wolf That Changed America, tells this story and its impact on wildlife conservation and preservation efforts in the United States. Lobo's pelt was preserved and kept by Seton throughout his life. The pelt, as you see it here, was donated to Philmont by Seton's widow after his death, along with the painting's Triumph of the Wolves and The Pursuit. These items are prominently on display here at the National Scouting Museum to showcase the developing and changing attitudes Seton held towards nature and wolves in particular. They also help illustrate these changes to his ideals and what he wrote and published. This change in attitude, based on his experience with Lobo, influenced Seton's formation of the Woodcraft Indians in 1902, as well as his partnership with Daniel Carter Beard and Sir Robert Baden Pohl in 1910 that founded the Boy Scouts of America. Well, that's gonna do it for this week. Thanks for joining us, and we ask you to join us again next time as we showcase more artifacts, items, and history from the National Scouting Museum, Philmont Scout Ranch.